The chapter begins with Kusakabe and Ino discussing that Yuta moved the coordinates of the domain barrier to a good spot. They expected Yuta's domain to crumble and had Maki ready to surprise attack Sukuna. Ino says it would be better to have more people inside Yuta's barrier to face Sukuna. They had initially planned to send Choso inside too. But Kusakabe says it's too late and if anyone tries to enter now, then Sukuna will become conscious and their surprise attack plan will fail. This conversation is happening before Maki enters Yuta domain, so it's kind of a small flashback. Maki prepares to enter Yuta's domain. Ino says Kusakabe can join the fight too, but Kusakabe feigns ignorance and cheers for Maki. As Maki gets ready, Yuta's domain breaks. Kusakabe says Yuta will give them the sign to attack the moment Sukuna is relaxed the most. Back to present. Yuta gets slashes and Maki stabs Sukuna. Rika immediately takes hold of Yuta while crying, and Ui Ui jumps in to transport Yuta somewhere else to heal him. Maki tries to slice Sukuna in half, but Sukuna quickly evades it. Sukuna realizes that Yuta willingly destroyed his domain to send a signal to his comrades. Sukuna can't heal Maki's cut as quickly as he can with other injuries. Narrator reveals that when Maki cuts a person's soul with her special katana, you can't normally heal that wound with RCT. To heal the soul, one must be able to clearly see the outline of their soul. Though, Sukuna can easily intercept his soul, thanks to being in Yuji, he's not able to easily heal his soul, since RCT to heal souls is different from usual, and he has taken damage from Gojo's battle. Yuji tries to get back to fight Sukuna, saying, Fushiguro, it's not over yet, but he suddenly falls down, coughing blood. Yuji has been constantly using RCT so far, even though it's been just a month since he learnt it. Yuji realizes he hasn't healed himself properly. Choso comes to the rescue and tells Yuji to calmly use RCT to fully heal himself. Choso tells Yuji, circulate your blood to every corner of your body as if you are spreading roots. Imagine completing the outline of your body with your blood vessels. Back to Maki versus Sukuna round two. Sukuna tries to hold Maki's katana, which was about to stab him, but Maki uses the momentum to lift Sukuna and throw him away. Sukuna cuts the building he was touching into pieces and thaws it. While Maki's field of vision is obstructed by flying debris, Sukuna sneakily send a slash, but Maki evades it. Sukuna changed twin meteors before sending that slash towards Maki. But it doesn't seem to be the world slash because Sukuna didn't use the full chant. Sukuna realizes that Maki can see his technique better than other sorcerers. Sukuna then says facing Maki feels like how he fought Maharaga in Shibuya. Even though Maki's katana stabbed his heart, Sukuna is forcibly having his heart beat by using cursed energy. This is exactly how Sukuna survived after he took out Yuji's heart back in Juvenile Arc. Maki asks Sukuna, you're gonna continue that while fighting me, referring to how he is forcibly making his heart beat. Sukuna replies, as of now, I have no problems. We now switch to Hakari versus Uram. Hakari says it's now easy to recognize Sukuna's presence. He initially thought it might be bad, seeing Sukuna's OG form, but Sukuna is still getting beaten up. Hakari says Sukuna's cursed energy is starting to dry up. Hakari says to Urame, we will be winning. But Uram laughs at Hakari saying he's a dumb idiot, just like his cursed technique. Urama defends Sukuna by saying, judging by his cursed energy waves, I can tell that Sukuna-sama has no interest in his opponents. Uram then says, you people should be ashamed of yourself for not being able to show results better than Gojo Satoru. Even if we take out the after effects from the first battle, Sukuna-sama still hasn't given his all.